It's totally worth it having these books. These are some of my most prized possessions. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. Ooh, I wonder. Howdy. I'm back uh, to do another video here in my house and I'm, I'm kind of missing getting out and doing some vlogs in the field but this is what I got right now so this is what I'm doing uh, last week I think my weeks are blending together but I uh, did a video called what the F am I doing and one of the things that I'm doing that I mentioned that uh, people ask several questions about these books that I make every year so I put together a little book of my photos um, every year and I do one of my nature photography. So wildlife and landscapes and stuff like that. And I just, uh, you know, I select some of my favorite images, usually a hundred-ish or so, and uh, I put them together in a little book. So I, I keep them over here on the bookshelf and I can flip through them anytime I want. And uh, it's just a really cool thing to do at the end of every year to kind of go through and just relive the year and the photos that I made and it's uh, it's pretty fun. And then I also do the same thing with uh, my family photos. So I take a lot of pictures of my kids and uh, you know, just all the fun stuff we do. I like to document it and kind of like old school, uh, you know, photo album where you used to paste them into a book. Well, I just have this thing printed up with fun moments and stuff that, uh, cool photos that I've taken of family stuff. So uh, a lot of people asked about how I'm doing that. So that's what I'm here to do today. I'm going to show you for the most part. I'm not going to do it like super detailed. I'm going to give you an overview of it and you'll have to figure out some of the little stuff, nuances and adapt it to the type of book that you want to make. The, the broad overview here is that I'm using Adobe Lightroom, which is what I use to catalog and edit all of my images anyways. And there's a book module in here. So I use that book module and that book module allows you to build the book and lay out the images and set the sizes and crop them and add page numbers and titles and all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, and then it automatically will interface with Blurb and uh, Blurb.com. You can have your book just basically printed directly from here. You can set up all the options, automatically upload it and then it just jumps onto their website and you can click order and they show up and they're quite expensive but to me it's totally worth it so uh, like this book I think if I was to buy this when it isn't on discount it'd be like a hundred and fifty bucks maybe but I usually I sign up for their uh, email list and they're almost always having some kind of a decent sale uh, so I got, I ordered these during a 40% off sale and I usually just wait until I see a good 40% off sale and then I order my books for the year and it works out pretty well. So they are expensive. To me, it's totally worth it having these books. These are some of my most prized possessions. So with that intro done, let's jump into uh, Lightroom here and I'll kind of show you how to get started and how to work through it the whole way. I'm going to do a sample book of let's see I just picked 12 images you know I do of like 150 on these books so I'm just gonna build a whole book right here it's gonna be a tiny book only 12 images but you'll get the, the idea of how it all works so I'm gonna jump right in I'm in Lightroom now one of the hardest things about this is selecting your images so I've already done that and I have put the images that I want to be in the book into a collection so uh, I'm assuming you know how to do all this stuff. If you don't, find a, a tutorial that can help you um, put images into a collection and edit them. These are all ready to go. They're edited, they're in this collection. You can see over here, there are 12 images in this collection that is named Best Book in the History of the World. I know that's not true either, but I had to name it something, so that's what I did. So now I've got these 12 images sitting here. And um, if you look up here, I'm in the library module, which is what you normally would be in uh, when you're working with images and editing. If you go up here, you now see that there's the book module. 
So once I have this collection selected over here, sorry, right here, uh, I select that collection, I can see those images, and now I'm just gonna go up here and click book. Now it automatically builds this book for me when I do that. And you can see how it built that. Now that's because that's the way the, the default preset is set up and I'm going to change that because this isn't what I want. So I can see how the uh, Lightroom built that book. And as I said, that's not what I want. So I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I am now going to go into this little section here called Auto Layout. And see how it says there's a preset there that shows the left page blank and the right has one photo. And that's how it built every page. The left one is blank and the right one is a photo. So if I zoom in to there, you can see here's the pages. Left one blank, right one a photo. And that is not what I want. So I'm gonna change that. I built one that I call Nature Book Preset. So uh, I would typically use that. I set that up one time and I use it, but I'll show you how to do this. So I'm gonna edit the auto layout preset. Now you can see here on the left side, it shows a blank page. For this book, I want to, them both to be the same. Uh, and I want it to be one photo that is fills up most of the sheet. This one will bleed all the way out to the edge. This one will leave a little white border. I happen to like that little white border. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, this zoom photos to fit, I'm gonna say, uh, leave it on fit because that will leave, if I have a, a vertical image, uh, then it will leave it as a vertical image instead of filling it to this square size. Same with, same with a horizontal image. It's gonna leave it as a horizontal image and not zoom in to fill the entire square. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do there. Um, and that's all I'm gonna do for this one. Okay, uh, I'll just title this uh, YouTube because that's what I'm doing. Okay, so right now I've got this preset now set up for YouTube. Now if I hit that clear layout button right there, see how it scratched the old layout that wasn't working the way we wanted it to? Uh, now I'm going to tell it to auto layout. So now it's gonna take those, all those images, my 12 images, you might have 100 or 200, and it'll build a whole book uh, in uh, the order that you have it in your collection. It's now gonna place those uh, into the book, and it's gonna fill one page, one image per page. Um, so this is my starting point. Now at this point I have really good flexibility to change this the way I want. If you see up here, this is my cover. Now, if I don't want this picture as my cover, back cover, then I can just change it. It's a drag and drop kind of a thing. So if I want the cover of this to be, let's say, uh, oh, I like, I actually like this, this image to be on the front cover. So I'm just gonna grab that, drag it over there. Okay, that's a new one. Now, I actually, the cover, it makes it to fill the frame because it's a hard cover wrap that I have set up. And actually, let's look at that now that I brought that up. So if we go to the upper right corner over here, you can choose what type of book you want. I'm doing a blurb photo book. Uh, the standard landscape size. Now, these that I, that I have done are the biggest, uh, the 12 inch by 12 inch large square. That's how I like mine. They're the most expensive as well. So I'm gonna change those. Uh, it, uh, it does some readjustments there. Uh, the premium luster paper is great. I'm gonna use that. Logo page, if, if you um, turn the logo page off, that's just at the bottom of the page here, or the, the final image, there's a little blurb logo. And uh, they give you a little bit of a discount if you have a logo page on there. And then it'll show you what your estimated price is. So for this little tiny book, it's 65 bucks. As I mentioned, when I do them like 150 images or so, it usually turns out to be about 150 bucks. Then I buy it on sale. And uh, it usually ends up being about 80 bucks a book or so for me. Okay, so now we have our basic layout here. Uh, so I've got my front cover, my back cover. Um, I, I can just see how I can kind of crop this and zoom in and out if I want. I actually don't like this image for the back cover, so I'm gonna just hit delete there. And uh, let's say I like this image uh, for my back cover. 
I'm going to right click on it and say zoom to fit. So now it fills up. I can just kind of drag it across to like that. So now this is the cover of my book, front cover, back cover. Now the book starts here. So I'm looking at this, if you look in the lower left corner, I'm looking at this in kind of the whole book layout. I can look at it as just a single page, page by page. I actually prefer working in this mode where I can see how they're going to lay out together. And uh, so here's my cover, front cover and back cover. They're set up nicely. This, uh, this image here, I don't want on a single page. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to find a different image to lead with. And I'm going to drag it over here. It's going to automatically swap this one over here. Now, because this is such a long, narrow image, uh, I'm going to zoom in on it. See how it's just super long? It's like that big. I'm going to make this a double, a double spread. So now I have this image here. I did the auto layout. I can now change the layout on any page I want. And because I want this to be a double layout, I'm going to change the page layout to a single photo, let's call it a two page spread. Uh, I can leave a little white border around it and bang, now I've got a double page spread there and it automatically moved, shifted all the other photos out of the way. So here's my cover, there's the coyote on page one. Now I've got a double page spread with that bison image. By the way, all these images, I just grabbed 12 images that I took during my uh, January winter in Yellowstone workshop that happened just a couple months ago. I'll be doing that again in the coming uh, January. So let me know if you're interested in joining me on that trip. It's awesome. And uh, we're going to have a blast. Winter in Yellowstone is like magic. So uh, anyway, let's continue on with this. So here I am looking at my book so far. So I feel like we've, we've nailed this, this, this. Now we can look at uh, I've got a coyote here with some bison here. I actually like this image here as a double uh, two-page spread as well. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to come over here to the right and tell it I want a two-page spread like that. And you have a ton of different layouts you can choose from with two photos, four photos. They have all kinds of different layouts. Um, anyway, so now I've got a new double-page spread there. And then I'm looking for, I now have a blank page here. I can just drag and drop. I can drag that right in. Bang, that looks good. So now I'm like more than halfway done with my book here. Page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those all look good. Now I've got some blank pages here because I've been shifting them around. Super easy to get rid of those. I'm just gonna highlight them, select them, right click, remove the pages, boom, they're gone. So now I'm on to my next set. If I wanted to add a page, it's very simple. I just right click in there anywhere and say, add a blank page. So a blank page is blank. And then I have to go tell it if I want to do some text, for instance. There's a little text box. I can put the photo in there. So you have really a ton of flexibility with all these different layouts that are happening with uh, multiple page spreads and three photos and text. So they give you a lot of flexibility here. Uh, I'm not utilizing those for this particular um, book, but you have that option. You can do that however you want. I'm going to remove this page because I was just showing you what that is. It automatically relays out everything below. So it leaves everything above the way I had it because I like that. I'm happy with this page layout. In fact, I might swap these two, just bang, it's that easy. I like having the, uh, the weasel running into the middle of the frame instead of running off the frame this way. But you can do this however you'd like. I like the way these are laid out, that one's laid out. So the auto layout did a pretty good job for me there. Bang, I would consider this a done book. Now, if you want to get in there, I'll just show you real quick. Like, it's very easy to add in a caption um, I can, if I just single click on any image, see how it pops up here where it says add photo text. Uh, I can just click on that. And if I just want to title it the date, like this was January 2020, and this is a long tailed weasel. So there's my caption. Now that caption I can, uh, you know, adjust the text. Like right now it's 
left justified. Uh, it's a Myriad Pro. So I can go in here, I can center it. Uh, I can change the font to whatever, whatever you want it to be. Um, you can change the size of it. You can, you know, you have a fair amount of flexibility here. Now I've got a big one. Okay, so anyway, just to demonstrate that you can add text, you can add text boxes that'll wrap, you can add captions, uh, you can add text to your cover. Um, same way, I'm not gonna do that here because it's just kind of a, um, a waste of time. Now that you know how to do it, you'll just be able to figure it out on every page, it's super easy. But then I can just scroll page to page with the right and left arrows and look through how my, uh, how my book is looking. And uh, there's the last page. So I can just review it and go, yes, these images work together well. Uh, that looks great as a double two-page spread. These work well together. That's a nice double spread. And then here's my cover. Um, so anyway, there's uh, a lot of flexibility here that I haven't shown you because I try and keep it simple. Uh, but you can go deep, deep, deep into this and there's a lot of flexibility. So at this point, let's say I've, I've totally got this the way I want it. I've reviewed it. I'm sure this is the way I want it to be. Uh, and now it's as simple as, you know, double checking, verify that you have your book set up to be the, the size and uh, style of book that you want. Just verify everything looks good the way you want it. And then down here at the bottom, Send the book to Blurb, and it's you're going to create an account with Blurb. Uh, it's going to automatically compile the book and upload it for you, so it's ready at that point to uh, print. And then it'll automatically open up the Blurb website, and you can click Order Now, enter a coupon code, and then they show up about a week later. So it works really great. Just keep in mind that this can be a long process when you've got hundreds of images, uh, but if they're already edited and if you've already selected the images, this process goes pretty fast. Uh, I'll show you real quick. Um, my family photo, instead of using the, like we did here with having one image per page, just a big square image as the auto, the default auto layout, uh, that works great for these. In the, the family book, I want to kind of jam pack more images in here, and I don't necessarily care if they're big and beautiful. So you, you'll notice a lot of these pages have two images. So my default page layout for my family book is uh, a two image layout. Um, so I just go to select the two photos, and then I grab one of these, like this one would work great. Okay. And, and it automatically lays out all the images as two. And then if I want to adjust, like this one, you know, I've got the, this laid out automatically there, and then I didn't want two images on this page, so I just change that. I just click on uh, this, the page layout over here and tell it I only want one image here, and bang, it build, rebuilds that page with only one image. So I do that, you know, I don't know how much of the time, maybe 20% of the time where I have one image and then two images. So you can lay that out however you want, um, but get in there and, and fiddle with it. Uh, get, just get used to using it. But I've found it that it, it's a really cool thing that, as I mentioned, these are some of my most treasured possessions. So uh, I had enough comments, people asking about how I do this, that I wanted to make a reasonably quick video about how to do it. So I hope this was helpful, even though it's not like every single step like pointed out to you. I mean, that would be an hour long video or more. Uh, so I just say, get in there, use this as a big picture look at how to do this, and then dive in and adapt it to whatever your needs are because they're gonna be different than mine. But uh, I just wanted to show you how simple, how easy, and how powerful it can be. And uh, I hope you go make some books. I, I love mine and it's a, just a great way to uh, enjoy your photography uh, on an ongoing basis, having these books sitting out on the coffee table to flip through once in a while. It's pretty cool. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that's helpful. Leave me some uh, comments and questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and uh, I don't want to get too deep, 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 deep into the weeds with little tiny technical minutia because uh, I certainly am not the foremost expert on doing this, but I've done it enough that I keep it simple and I'm able to do it. So have a great day.
See you next time.